Hello! Uh, in this episode of Finno Brick Machining, we are going to make a backplate for my new uh, Forjo chuck. The Forjo chuck itself is uh, underway. Uh, it's coming here about uh, one week. And uh, what I have been doing is this. Uh, this is the back plate and uh, I have already been turning it. I have some footage over that you will be seeing that. And furthermore, what I will be doing here in this video mainly is the taper uh, for this uh, uh, bayonet uh, attachment. Uh, but that's uh, something that is uh, should be quite accurate. Uh, well, uh, let's see and uh, let's uh, start this uh, process. Well, uh, now here is uh, how I have uh, done it uh, this time. There is this M12 bolt, uh, which is uh, pulling uh, this uh, thing against uh, the jaws. And now since I need to operate in the center here, the first thing I need to do now is to attach it uh, in some other way. Obviously I don't have a chuck big enough to hold this uh, piece of material, so I need to be a little bit creative here. Uh, what I will do is to drill three holes uh, around here and then I will bolt it uh, to the uh, jaws. The, the jaws uh, itself, these are replaceable hard jaws so I can uh, put the bolt through and bolt it uh, to the jaws. And now the next thing I will uh, draw a, a circle here and then with the compass uh, make uh, the places for the holes. It's really like a crime to mark uh, this uh, surface, uh, which is uh, really nice, but uh, you have to do what you have to do. So, uh, I will mark here places uh, where I should put uh, the bolts to attach this one to the jaws of uh, this uh, chuck. And, uh, well, uh, uh, how far? That's one question. And uh, I have determined that, uh, okay, this uh, chuck is uh, 14 centimeters wide here in the back. If I put them uh, uh, 15 uh, centimeters diameter, so 7.5, but I can dial here 15 centimeters, so then it should be in the correct place. 25 turns, and now I count this in Finnish because uh, yeah, I have approximated it's uh, about in the center here. <coughs> so 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25. 25 turns. So there comes my first scribe. And this is delicate operation. Because this material is hard. Can I see it? Yes, I can see it. That's one. And there comes the second one. And the third one. There you are. One, two, and three. And now when you are uh, putting a mark, uh, I would like to use this as a hand rest, actually. Now it's good. So, it's about there. So when you put a mark into a surface like this, you... Ah, sorry. So you slide it can feel how it grabs into the groove of which I just made. It's there. Now I just... That's our mark. Yeah. And now I will be using a compass uh, to get uh, the other, other uh, two places. So let's detach this. 
Ooh, it's really heavy. <laughs> it's on the table. And now let's get rid of this as well. You noticed I didn't die even if I left it in the truck. Uh, so, uh, this is a compass. <laughs> and uh, there is the starter hole I already made. And now when I put uh, the other end of the compass like this and then find uh, the line here, go this way like that and then it should and it does come back to the original hole. Uh, I actually made this. It's a iterative process where you adjust the adjust the uh, length of your compass until until that happens. And I made it in two directions and uh, scribed uh, small lines here. I will now mark those lines. Feel the exact place. It's there, that's one, and then we have another one. And I'm doing it here because I have daylight here. Daylight is, uh, well, I have quite good lightning in this shop, but these markings are really faint. And it's there. <coughs> to the milling table. Huh. Uh, just uh, there are parallels under and then uh, two two clamps and uh, well <laughs> nothing fancy in that one. Uh, this is a uh, 7.9 millimeter drill. I will actually ream the holes to 8 millimeters after I have and uh, done uh, the drilling here but uh, Furthermore, I will not drill them all the way through because uh, this material is really tough and uh, I ha don't have the faintest idea about the feeds and speeds about this drill with this material. So uh, I just have to, uh, yeah, uh, I could very easily break this uh, drill uh, with this operation. I'm going to use out of it because it's very laborious to uh, do the z-axis in this milling machine and uh, yeah uh, and I will locate the holes uh, by side so uh, let's start have very good starter holes here. Uh, drill presses, uh, or at least mine, has a little bit sloppy, uh, they are sloppy sideways somewhat. Not a lot, maybe, well, uh, not a lot, but it, it flexes. So when you put it into the hole, uh, it, uh, the drill actually aligns it, it itself, in this case, with the existing hole. So I can go on from there. And please no, no gloves. So, uh, uh, real press and gloves just don't mix. So, and the speed is about the same as in the milling machine. Now the difference here is that I can pull the drill easily out. I was not able to do that. Yeah, let's see how this works. Yeah. And you can control the, the feed really easy. And I can tell this is a tough material.
Next step, <laughs> I need to make the bolts. Well, okay, I, I dialed this in and uh, there is uh, axial run out of uh, 0 0.2 millimeters. It doesn't matter because uh, uh, in this case uh, the face flatness is what matters here. Because uh, this is too large, I have to take away anyway uh, from uh, the outer rim. But uh, the flatness, uh, so that this, is, this, is, uh, this side is running straight. Well, it is. Uh, there is a deviation at the outer rim of two hundredths of a millimeter at the moment, and it doesn't move, no matter how I pound uh, it with a, uh, a hammer. So it uh, it doesn't move. Uh, so that's okay now, uh, and uh, uh, so it doesn't move uh, while I'm turning it. Uh, that's uh, that's the important thing. And uh, then <coughs> what we are going to do now is to set this compound to a suitable angle for the, uh, for the bayonet uh, taper. 
and the bayonet taper is <laughs> here is my markings uh, that's the taper in uh, it's 7 degrees 7 minutes 30 seconds <laughs> okay so it's uh, 7.1 to 5 degrees and if you take a sign out of that it will be 0 0.1 to 403 no, so uh, I'm using a sign bar here uh, the calculation in this case is really simple because uh, we are a metric <laughs> and uh, this is uh, um, I have used I don't have the gauge blocks so so I used my micrometer adjustable uh, parallel and uh, now it's uh, exactly to 12.40 uh, uh, um, millimeters the thickness of this one okay uh, and uh, now when I place it under here everything is cleaned because this uh, I assume that this surface runs parallel with the slide uh, if, if it is not so this won't work at all so uh, <coughs> I put the gauge block here under and then uh, use this sign bar this sign bar has uh, distance between uh, the round things it's uh, 100 millimeters so uh, I approximate uh, here about 7 degrees so it should be somewhere there and uh, then I use my starret uh, uh, well combination square I have noticed uh, that this is actually really square uh, it uh, well I can uh, check it out uh, by measuring two ways I'll show you when I uh, do this. So now when I put this here, we should get mm -hmm. Well, I believe that's our Yeah, okay That's that and then I move it so that I can come from the other edge as well. Measure it this way. It agrees. So we should be there. <laughs> Seven point one. Okay, uh, now it is, uh, well, you could actually uh, measure this, uh, align this with the taper there, but it's so short, it's really, really short, so I am quite uh, convinced that this method is uh, more accurate uh, than uh, doing with the taper itself. <coughs> okay, so now I will peel off this uh, thing from the middle. Uh, how fast there I run this. I think that's uh, the fastest I dare. Just uh, skimming the surface, feeding manual. roughing uh, the taper uh, this is not a taper at the moment it's just a, a recess <laughs> so I have been now taking one millimeter cuts away from this and uh, yeah so uh, I'm still having uh, quite a lot to go let's take five more millimeters and then I start turning the taper the chips are straight uh, from uh, down under and I didn't mean Australia
Okay, that was the last uh, millimeter from the diameter uh, rough cutting. So okay, the insert is now turned. Uh, I have also slowed down the feet. What I'm doing now, I have not touched uh, the dials here. I will do a spring pass here. And it should uh, clean up the surface really nicely now. So let's see. The finish is uh, excellent. But now we need to measure this one. The depth and uh, the width. Both. I want to remove any from this surface any points that stand out okay well of course this corner is razor sharp using this tool in this case would create a secondary burr which uh, would actually spoil your measure measurements. So therefore, and uh, actually I didn't debur it, I just removed the burr, uh, the recent uh, points uh, from, uh, from uh, this surface. And now I'm going to measure the depth of this uh, thing, hopefully without hurting myself. There you are. So this one says that it is, is that 15.57? <laughs> I think it is. Let's take another, but uh, let's change the place. Like maybe there. Again, push it quite hard, and then very gently. Oh. Well, I'm getting a constant result. It's uh, again at this 15.57, so I believe it's quite exactly 15.57. Okay, good. Like that. Wiggle it a little bit, tighten it, and then. Yeah. So sixty-six point ninety-one. Let's take another measurement. As Kate Fenner said about this measuring method, please give me the figure I want. <laughs> Sixty-six point ninety-one. Well, let's put one more rotation here and check it one more time there. So sixty-six point ninety-one, and this uh, tool is pretty tight. Actually, it's very very good and tight tool. So you, oh, this might give you a different result now. It didn't go well because uh, once it starts to be a taper I cannot measure it any more reliably uh, well I, I could measure it with the two cone method but uh, well I should have prepared uh, with two cones <laughs> and I, I don't have the two cones so I need to rely on my dials here and uh, of course now I can actually match this 
I can uh, disconnect this from the uh, from the lathe and turn it around and put it back. But well, now uh, I will calculate. Uh, it's a very uh, simple calculation actually. So here are the results of uh, this measuring thing. We have a height of 15.57 and uh, this diameter is 66.91. Okay, so our goal is there, but uh, I want to know. So this is now 66 and it's a remagering because it's straight. But what it would be if I would uh, turn it as a taper? What is What would that be at the, mo at the moment? That's uh, my my question here. So this is actually uh, the seven point something degree, uh, which I have the sign calculated. The sign is there for that. So if I multiply <coughs> the height with the sign of this angle, I get the length of this. But it's only the other. It's only the other half. So I need to multiply it by two and then add to this figure so I can get uh, then I get the diameter of uh, what it would be at the moment here and I will now do the calculations <coughs> well okay uh, here we are starting to turn the taper and I'm feeding this manually with the compound We are at uh, 70.77 millimeters uh, that uh, radius the, uh, on top and on the bottom we are at uh, well oh, 66.91 so let's go half a millimeter is that too much no it's not too much it's uh, quite good amount We should now be here at 76.77. I would never ever use uh, this questometer to uh, measure the final dimension. Actually, I cannot measure it uh, because of the taper. But uh, this is just a sanity check. Okay, 76.77. Well, it's 76.6 but uh, of course uh, this might lie to me but uh, near enough now that was the first six millimeters <laughs> cuts are now done and uh, well we have still 0.795 millimeters to go 0.795 okay so I will now raise the speed a little bit let's see where I would like to go is that okay mm -hmm. This okay. 
This is loud, I believe. Yeah. That, okay. Yes, if we lower it a little bit like that. And then we take, let's say, I'll touch it first and uh, see, uh, just a spring cut and see if it resonates. We might not be able, yes, we can use this piece, good. We can get a super surface finish here. Let's see if it resonates there at the bottom. No, it did not. Very good. And now let's take 0.1 millimeter. See how it feels. Oh, this feels good. Okay, we can do this. There you are. Uh, I have to be really careful with this one uh, for the first low speed. Oh, well, it should do the trick. Diffused uh, the setup, and now I'm going to test uh, with uh, this stuff. Uh, this is uh, Prussian blue. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, I will put some of this blue stuff here, and also to this surface, and then I just put the, the thing on the nose. Yeah, I already tried it out, and it uh, uh, well, I, it's. Uh, feels like a good fit, but, uh, well, <laughs> you never know. Let's be, be prepared. <laughs> oh, this stuff is probably, I will probably regret this uh, rest of my, oh yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. This is uh, going to be so fun. I will probably look like a smurf after this operation. Oh yeah. Ooh. It's dark. Well, it's blue. Definitely it's blue. Uh -huh. You probably get the best fit by applying a lot of this there. Yeah? Uh, let's put it there. Yeah, there it went. Then I will. Now we are talking. <laughs> you already have. The blue stuff everywhere. Uh, maybe I should take off the gloves. Ooh. Let's see how easily it comes apart now. Yeah, it comes apart, but uh, it definitely sticks. And that's a very good thing. Now, let's take this away. 
that away and see where we have all the markings. Well, at least we don't have any markings here, which is a good thing. We have a quite, quite broad marking there, probably there. Well, it's mostly on the end, this end of the taper. So the taper is not entirely correct, but I believe... Oh, no, 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 no. We have faint markings also, uh, also near the... Yeah. Okay. I believe... Uh, especially because we didn't get any markings on this surface yet. But it's still there, quite tight, so uh, I'll take this stuff off from here. So, uh, well, and uh, there is nothing, absolutely nothing I can do for that one if uh, it's a uh, uh, bad fit. But it's not bad. It's not the best possible because it didn't touch everywhere here. It had uh, some spots uh, here and there, but uh, mainly on the end of this cone. So this is probably too wide this way. This, and my fingers are getting blue. Yeah. Well, I accept this one. So the next step will be to drill uh, four holes here. Yeah, okay, I have been dancing around uh, this uh, piece of uh, iron with this dial indicator and uh, uh, well it was attached uh, to this uh, spindle and uh, there were two impacts effects on this one first of all the rain stopped and then uh, this one is now uh, centered uh, with this uh, uh, well taper so uh, yeah well uh, the next thing is uh, what I'm going to do here is to drill and tap M10 uh, uh, threads into here. So first of all drill and this is a bolt circle, circle with four bolts. So it's very easy actually. And uh, the circle total diameter is uh, 104.8 millimeters. And uh, these are the violet bolts these are like this they are mm, put into four places here and they are really sloppy on the bionet itself uh, because they are not uh, taking part of the centering they are just pulling this thing into the uh, uh, into the late nose so uh, I will now drill these and the depth uh, well, I measured it will be 18 millimeters, so it will be 12 turns uh, on this uh, handle. Everything is uh, like uh, zeroed. I have. Uh, I can always co come back to the zero point, uh, and uh, I know the backslash directions. They are clockwise every time. So when you are doing manual milling, manually without a zero, so. Always take care of the backslash and the easiest way to do this is to always uh, Make the final turn into the same direction. I mean uh, you could also Compensate for backslash uh, by turning the other direction, but uh, then you should uh, remember those directions but now when uh, whenever I do this I always uh, use the counter the clockwise direction so so, yeah, but you have to do this. Uh, when I go to some place and uh, it's the wrong direction I have to turn the wheel, I must go past the point and then come back with the correct uh, wheel direction. This way you get it uh, correctly in there. Okay, so uh, <laughs> enough talking, let's uh, drill the holes and tap them.
about this episode of Finno Greek Machining. Uh, I will uh, uh, this chuck which you don't see now, that chuck plate which you back plate which you don't see at the moment. Uh, uh, I will uh, finish it when I get the re real thing, uh, the chuck itself. Uh, that's uh, the best documentation uh, the chuck itself. So uh, and uh, then I see how I fit it here. So, but that will be in the next episode of Finno Greek Machining. Till then, bye!